Welcome to a presentation on absolute value functions. In this presentation, we'll go through the definition, of what an absolute value is, and we'll go about graphing an absolute value function. But first, a quick review of what the term absolute value means. Every now and then, when you're doing questions, you might see something like, what is the absolute value of minus four? And when you see these, these two horizontal lines, they're not ones, they're like longer than ones, and they're, they're usually around negative or positive numbers, or maybe even some expression. So this means what is the absolute value of whatever is within this, uh, the, these, these, or between these two lines. And by absolute value, what, what this means is, uh, is what is the non-negative value of, of this, of whatever is contained within. It's so the non-negative value, in other words, the magnitude of whatever this number, regardless of what its sign is. So the non-negative value of negative 4 is 4. So we'd write the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Now, the absolute value of 4, again, we're looking for the non-negative value of this. Well, 4 is already non-negative. It's a positive value. So the absolute value of 4 is also 4. If, I did, if, if you would have faced the question, what is the absolute value of negative 20? You'd say, well, the non-negative value of 20 or, or the, the magnitude associated with the number negative 20 is 20. That's generally how absolute values works. The formal definition is this. Uh, if x is greater than or equal to 0, we have the value itself. Whereas if whatever is within this absolute value find, sign, if that is less than 0, then what we do is we take the negative of that value. So for instance, here, let's say the absolute value of four, well, four is greater than or equal to zero, so that would just equal four itself. Alternatively, the absolute value of minus four, this is going, since negative four is less than zero, then this is going to be the negative of whatever is in here. So the negative of negative four. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so this will equal four. So that's a quick review of what an absolute value means. Now here we're asked to graph y equals the absolute value of x. Let's go about constructing a table of values where we think where we sub in some x values and determine their associated y values and use these values in order to construct some points on the graph. So let's do that and we'll pick, um, we'll pick minus three, minus two, minus one, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, the absolute value of minus 3. This is the non-negative value associated with this number, so the magnitude, so this is just 3. The absolute value of minus 2, considering here x is minus 2, and we've got y equals the absolute value of x, it's just going to be 2. The absolute value of minus 1, this is getting a bit repetitive, this is going to be 1. The absolute value of 0, this is going to be zero. The absolute value of one, well, the absolute value of a, of a positive number is just the number itself, so this is going to be one. The absolute value of two is two, and the absolute value of three is equal to three. Let's plot these points on a graph and see what sort of curve they, uh, they elicit. So here we've got x equals negative three and y equals three. That's going to be three units left for negative three of the origin three units up, so that's going to be this point. We've got x equals negative 2 and y equals 2, so that's two units left to the origin and two units up. x equals negative 1, y equals 1, one unit left, one unit up. At x equals 0, y equals 0, so that's going to be the origin. At x equals 1, y equals 1, it's going to be here. At x equals 2, y equals 2, and at x equals 3, y equals 3. Okay, well it seems we've got the straight line here that is very similar to, uh, or, or is the same as x, as y equals x. So here it looks like on this side we've got this straight line going like this, and that's similar or, or the same as the line y equals x, except only for values of x greater than or equal to zero. On this left-hand side of the origin, it looks like we've got a line that's similar to the line y equals minus x. 
but again, only for x values less than zero. So this is an absolute value function. Now what's interesting is if we were to look at the precise definition of an absolute value, this could have given us guidance about how to draw this curve without drawing up this table of values. So here we've got y equals the absolute value of x. Let's rewrite the absolute value of x down here. So this is x for x is greater than or equal to zero or minus x for x is less than zero. So here, what on this graph, what we've got is two different curves, essentially two different lines. One line is this y equals y equals x. So this is the line y equals x, but it's only defined for the domain x is greater than or equal to zero. Whereas we've got y equals minus x. This is the line y equals minus x, but it's only defined for x is less than or equal to zero. So if this first line were defined for all points, y equals x would look something like this, and y equals minus x would look something like this. But we haven't got these lines as part of the, as part of the curve. Instead, we've only got the right-hand portion on the origin of the y equals x curve and the left-hand portion of the y equals minus x curve. So we can see here that the absolute value function looks like a v. Uh, for this particular function, it's got its pointy or its, its pointy part or its elbow at the origin. And you'll find that many absolute value functions that take the form of y equals and then something involving x either look like a v that's the right way up or they'll look like a V upside down. And they'll have different angles within, so some absolute value functions may look like this, or they might look like this, so long as it's a, a symmetrical V. And that's the introduction to absolute value functions.